Hey, this is Brad, the founder and CEO of Elevar. And in this video, I'm going to show how to set up GA4 on your Shopify store. So first thing is first, you will need to have a data layer installed on your store. And this data layer is what populates events and data associated with those events like product views, add to carts, purchases, if, if you're just going client side and aren't going server side, et cetera. So I'll show using the Elevar data layer. And if you have this installed on your store, then that'll fast track you to get up and running very quickly. Uh, so let's jump into the actual analytics side of things. So inside of Google, you likely already have a GA4 account since they've been pushing it for the last year or two. So either take your existing property and I'll show you the data stream ID that you'll need to grab, or you can just go through and create a new property, which I'll show how to do right now. So let's just call this the all of our store, which would be our property setup. And we'll click next here and create, then you gotta move my bubble. Already. So now I have my new GA4 property and I will be in my data stream settings. So here I'll select web and drop in my store details. The enhanced measurement is there's a couple things that are new with GA4. Actually, there aren't a couple things. There are a lot of things that are new with GA4. But the enhanced measurement, there's some of these base events like scroll, uh, scroll tracking, outbound click tracking, video tracking, et cetera, that previously with the universal analytics, you would set up through GTM event tracking. You can just leave this as a default. Our guide goes through this in much more detail. So we'll just create the stream. And now we have our measurement ID. So again, if you already have an account created and you wanted to go through the setup using Elevar's pre-built tag that comes with all of the base events, including revenue tracking, product tracking, et cetera, that you can grab your existing measurement ID. Otherwise, just go ahead and copy this and I'll show you the next steps here. So one thing that is going to change between now and when GA4 goes into full effect and Universal Analytics no longer exists, which is July 2023, is a lot of additional settings will be added. So for example, there will be some additional settings that in GA4 are called more tagging settings at the bottom. You might not have even seen that on my screen, but this is where you can configure things like cross domain, excluding traffic, i.e. filters and universal analytics, uh, the quote unquote referral exclusions that again was a setting that was used quite often in universal analytics for things like paypal.com, shop.pay, uh, checkout.myshopify.com, et cetera. That's where you would configure this in here and a few other things here that I would assume these will continue to add on as uh, Google rolls out more updates to this. I'm not gonna go through the full updates on this video. Our full guide will walk through this in a little bit more detail, but just keep in mind and we'll update our guide as these changes roll out um, over the next few months. Anyways, all we need to do here is just copy that measurement ID and we'll head back to your Elevar dashboard. And this is where you have the pre-built tag or your destination setting if you're going through our full robust setup for server-side tracking. But this is even available for free plans is you can access our GA4 client-side container. And this has all of the tags, triggers, and variables that's needed in order to fully populate the GA4 property. Now, there are some guides out there that'll say, hey, just go to GA4, copy the script, and paste it in your theme.liquid. The problem with that is that'll get you page view data it won't give you product data, add to cart, view uh, view product events and checkout events and purchase events, et cetera. That's where you'll need a container like this to flesh out GA4 so it is fully up and running. So once you are here, just go ahead and drop in your GA4 property measurement ID, download the container. I've already fast-tracked this step here. Head on over to your GTM web container and go to admin import and then merge, very important. And then you can see the different tags and everything that's being imported here that are mapped to your GA4 measurement ID. All right, so now we have all of our tags here. You can see they're assigned to all of the relevant triggers across the site. 
and we can pop in and view a couple of these here. So let's take a look at the GA4 purchase event. You'll see something that's different with GA4 is you can send event parameters. So this will be your product, product data, the order ID, revenue, shipping, et cetera, and user properties. So these would be most similar to custom dimensions in universal analytics. Uh, you do have to be explicit with this data here where universal analytics, many times you would not have to go through on your purchase tag and define all of these settings. So that's the purchase event and you can see, and you can customize this across all others. You'll see in the add to cart, we already have the product data that we're sending and product views the same thing. And then in the base tag configuration, you can set more user properties. So I'll show you in a second with the LLVAR data layer, all of the different properties. So let's say you wanted to pass some of your UTM data as user properties or G click IDs, Facebook click IDs, et cetera. You want to pass that into GA4 with all of your all of your hits and all of your events because you might pull that into BigQuery and do some larger data analysis uh, type of fun stuff. So that's the G GTM side. We're going to go ahead and preview this. And then we'll show how this works and we'll show the live data coming through. Alrighty, so now <clears throat> we are on our test store in preview mode and we are connected. You can see our DL user data that the base tag triggered on. Let's take a look at the data layer first here. So under this marketing object, you can see all of the different cookie and UTM parameter type data that we are storing. So if you wanted to pass this into your GA4 property, you can do this just by configuring those user properties. In any case, you'll see the, as we go through here, let me just get to a product page and we'll take a look here. So we have our DL view item, which is what our product view or item view triggers off of. And you can click right into this GA4 tag and validate that your data is accurate. So this is your uh, product SKU, variant ID, et cetera. So you can go through your site, validate that all of the different GA4 tags are triggering as expected. And once you're ready, you can publish and it's as easy as that. Um, if you want to take a look at our, uh, let's see here, our data streams. So let's just copy our measurement ID. I think I had this set up on a different test property. Yep. Okay. So we'll just copy that in there, which is in this GA4 variable, and then we'll save. And we are going to preview again so I can show you how the real time preview works in GA4 as well. All right. So now we're on here and we'll pop over to a product page. And we'll go to our reports and we should see our real time showing up here in a second. View our real time already. So there you have it. So you can see now on my property, I do live in Charleston, South Carolina, and this is a test store. And you can see we have, uh, or at least our page view data, our view item event down here in the events. So you can see this data starting to come through. So now I'm ready to go. I have a fully fleshed out GA4 property with all of the enhanced e-commerce data. This is the easiest way to get up and running. If you want to go more robust and go server side set up for GA4 and you're an LLVAR customer, then you can actually walk through this whole process here. And uh, we'll just show you what that looks like. So you can drop in your GA4 ID and then you have server side tracking set up for GA4. So if you have any questions, our complete guide on GA4 goes through a lot of these different nuances, but this is the quick and dirty way to get your client side GTM tracking set up for GA4 for your Shopify store. That's a lot of fours. See ya and let me know if I can help with anything. Thanks.